Good morning, YouTube. Louie here. Uh, today I want to take a look at uh, the yield curve and its relationship to gold uh, going back go oh, 20, 30 years. And we'll see what happens when the yield curve uninverts. Uh, first off, I want to say welcome to new channel members. Uh, if you're looking to join the membership, uh, the button should be up there somewhere near the heading. Uh, a join button and I'm um, working on the silver bars for uh, the people that have already indicated they want one. But welcome to the members and thank you for supporting the channel. And just another word that I'm not taking anything away from anything I do for free. Everything I do is for free here. But if you want to show your support, um, join that membership and you'll be rewarded with uh, some nice looking silver bars at a great price. Okay guys, and uh, the way to secure your bar if you are a channel member is to email me at losinglouie at yahoo.com and uh, I'll get right back to you and let you know what uh, what number bar you get out of the limited run of 50. Okay, now on to the, the uh, comparison. Uh, what we have down here on the bottom is a yield curve inversions. Okay, this goes back to 1996. But the yield curve is uh, simply math. It is uh, a subtraction of the yield on the 10-year uh, minus the yield on the two-year. In a normal economy, uh, money that is tied up for longer should yield higher and tied up for shorter should yield lower. Therefore, the yield curve should be positive. You should be in the white area here in a normal uh, expanding economy. But when people sense re recession in the future, then the long end tends to drop um, sometimes below the short end, the 10 minus the 2. That's when we get into the pink area here when yield curves invert, which is what we have had for the last nearly two years now uh, going up to, let's see, we have been inverted since uh, late 2022, which is not a great sign for the economy. And then ultimately the Fed uh, starts lowering the short-term rates and uh, that, that tends to boost the economy. But let's go back and see what happened. Uh, well, let's, let's just go back the last since 2000, okay? So in 2000, and we're gonna look at the price of gold, which is the chart above. And this is very unscientific, but I have been asking myself this question, and you might as well. What happens when the yield curve uninverts? All right. So uh, what we had in the year 2000, 2001, you remember the dot-com bust. I remember it well. And our markets today look a lot like those markets, in my opinion. And we had an inversion of the yield car, uh, the yield curve, uh, very consistent with the recession, which I think is the gray bar up here. So the yield curve uninverted in uh, to mid 2000. I'm sorry, the yield curve inverted uh, in uh, mid 2000 and uninverted um, by late 2000. If we look at the price of gold, we can see the price of gold, which was only oh, about $500 going into the year 2000. Everybody was investing in stocks. You, you could throw a dart and make money in the stock market. And then in, uh, in the year 2000, we had the uninversion of the yield curve and the recession. And gold spiked from, oh, I don't know, about $500 and continued running until uh, the year 2007 or so and peaked out at about $1,000. Okay, so that is gold in the first recession had a very, very strong move after the uninversion of the yield curve. Sorry, these dates don't line up exactly. Let's move on to the great financial crisis, which was 2007, 2008. And this was not a, uh, a large inversion of the yield card curve. So I don't know how relevant that is, but in, uh, oh, late 2006 or so, we had the yield curve uh, invert and did not uninvert until around 2000, mid-2007. So that's going to put us right around here. And the uninversion often uh, um, is consistent with recession 
because the reason it's uh, uninverting is um, the Fed is dropping the short rates to spur the economy and try to avoid recession. So if we look right around 2007, right around this area here, we can see that gold had a dip from uh, 1400 down to 1100 and that is the recession pulling it down but it didn't stay down for long within about a year it moved back to 1400 and then plowed higher all the way up to 2400 uh, that is uh, 2400 was right around uh, 2010 okay and now we're just going to go forward and see where we are well we've had a massive uh, inversion of the yield curve for the last couple years and right now we are coming out of that uh, with an uninversion with gold at an all-time high of uh, 2500 I think this chart cut off on me here so uh, you know I would say that the uninversion of the yield curve um, and even recession is probably good for gold although there could be a short-term dip if the recession is massive uh, like it was in uh, 2008 um, or perhaps no dip uh, if the recession is not, uh, you know, extreme. All right, so going into this, I think your chances are pretty good of a continued upside in gold. And, uh, um, but uh, again, we could have a dip back down, and I can't tell you the magnitude of that dip, but uh, the yield curve uninversion uh, is probably a good thing for gold. That would be my thesis here. If we look at silver, it is not uh, it is not as compelling. Uh, silver, uh, being a commodity as well as a precious metal, uh, can be dragged down radically by recession. So uh, there's no guarantees on silver, but gold is a pretty good bet, and uh, I think silver is as well. But uh, you can't prove that through history. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye now.